want um, to agree for this meeting to to be recorded. Um, so so please go ahead and then and accept that. Okay, so um, today's meeting uh, is uh, regarding the grant agreement information session. So you are likely here because you've submitted a proposal um, to the Utines for Green project. And um, out of the 163 eligible applications that we've received and reviewed, you've been uh, selected. So obviously a very big congratulations on on that. It's a very big achievement and you should be very, very proud um, of your proposal. Sorry, so I'm getting a little bit of feedback. So again, just please turn off uh, your mics. Um, and, and if you have any trouble hearing us, uh, do feel free to, to let us know in the chat as well. Uh, so like I was saying, um, a very big congratulations to all 73 applicants and their teams for, for their successful uh, proposal. We're very excited to have you here to welcome you to the Uteens uh, for Green project. And this is going to be one of the few meetings that we'll have at this uh, preparatory uh, phase. Before we begin, uh, I would like to uh, introduce you all to the consortium that makes up the Uteens for Green team. So there are four entities uh, present here today. So we have Startup Europe Regions Network, which is represented by myself, Sada, um, and Louisa. We also have Bankwatch Network, which is represented by Joanna and as well as Milka. So they might have their cameras on. Uh, they might give you a little wave. Uh, we also have Youth and Environment Network, which is represented by Sophie and Lucia and Eva. And we also have Generation Climate in Europe, which is represented by, <coughs> sorry, Lorenzo. Um, this is the team that will be supporting you throughout your project phase. Um, and this is uh, the, the members that you'll be uh, in contact with. So today's meeting, um, we want to give you an overview of what to expect in this grant agreement preparation. As you have been uh, informed in the previous emails that we've been engaging in, your projects are expected to begin as of April 1st of 2023, of course. Uh, and this is marked by the signing of a grant agreement. So a grant agreement really is a document that is signed between the project applicant or the youth association that is representing that applicant and Startup Regions Network. This grant agreement will give you an outline of the activities that your project team will undertake. So it will describe your project. It will establish how long your project will last. It will establish also the budget that you will be receiving. And this is based on the application you submitted. It will also define how the payments are going to work, right? The amounts that you'll be receiving and when, but also it will inform you of what your obligations and rights are as well. Um, there is um, the, the, the very important information that you have to understand, which is if you are an applicant, so if you applied and you are under 18 years old and you, know, you applied as an individual or you're representing a group of colleagues, then your legal guardian, your parent or your legal guardian will be representing you in this agreement. This is also applicable if you are under 18 years old and you've applied through the support and, 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 and um, in, in line with your youth association for which you volunteer. So in this case, the youth association will be a representative when signing the grant agreement and you as the applicant will be the team leader. If you are under 18 years old, then your legal guardian will have to give consent for you to participate. So there will be a little bit more information on that, but this is something that we wanted to highlight and, and make sure we've, uh, we've, um, we've 
transmitted this information and is understood. That's I see cute. that there's a couple of hands up and questions. What I would ask is if you have any questions about any content that we're, we're providing you, write it in the chat, because if we don't have the time to address all of your questions, what we will do is we will compile them. We will take the time to, to provide an answer in writing so that we can share with everyone. And that way the information is, is kept um, kept uh, stored and, and, and well documented, okay? Excuse me, sorry. Yeah. A, a number of my colleagues are in the waiting room. Could you kindly accept them, please? For sure. Thank you. Give me a quick second just to, okay. There should be all joining at the, at the moment. With the, within the grant agreement that you will be receiving, you will also see that obviously it has a number of articles. So we wanted to go over not all, but the really the key most important articles uh, to understand. So article two, title entry into force and implementation period of the agreement and article three, which is uh, form of grant funding rate and maximum amount of estimated budget. These really just outline uh, the implementation period of your agreement. So again, how long your project will last. And it will, again, identify what your project is and the budget. The budget is really based on the number that you have submitted as part of your proposal. The article four, and this is something that once you receive, you'll have to carefully read it analyze it, understand it, and, and engage with us and ask us question if you have any questions, is about what costs are eligible and not eligible. And, and they will set out these conditions to make sure that the costs that are part of your project can be reimbursed by us. So the budget has a number of categories, personnel costs, subcontracting costs, costs for travel, accommodations as substance allowances. It has a category for purchases of equipment, infrastructure and others, and purchase of other goods, works and services. These are categories that you've already seen, given that you have sent us your budget uh, you know, estimate. It's very important that you understand that if you start to incur costs that are related to your project, you need to save all documentation that you receive and collect as part of those costs. Receipts, invoices, if you request a quote, if there's any communication between you and the supplier, it's very important that you keep this because eventually you will have um, to provide us with this information. Later on, we will have more meetings about this to make sure you feel supported and that you understand what this implies. But there will be a financial tool that will list the documents that you need to provide us related to, um, to any costs. So the main message to take away from this is that there are eligible allowed costs and not eligible, so costs that will not be reimbursed. And if you start to think about your project, if you start purchasing things for your project, you need to keep all of this documentation right away, right? It's better to have more documents, more proof of these costs than less. Article five, this really just explains the responsibilities of the beneficiary, so of the person, of the individual that signs the agreement. So this beneficiary will be responsible to implement the agreement, but it's very important that you also understand that when you work in a team, when the project is completed by a group of your colleagues, they are also responsible for the technical implementation of the action. So yes, there will be a individual signing the agreement and they will be responsible. But as a team, you're all uh, very much responsible for ensuring that the project happens and it happens in good faith um, and is completed as expected. 
Two other articles are very important. And again, these may be a little bit more challenging to understand, a little bit more confusing, and we will have more explanation, more meetings to discuss this is regarding the reporting and the payments uh, to do with your project. So the article 13 explains that the beneficiary is required to submit three reports in total. There are two interim reports, so reports that happen as your project is developing, and a final report. These reports cover both the technical aspect of your report, but also the financial. Article four is about the payments. How will they be made? Um, at what time frame? And we'll talk a little bit more about this. The first payment happens uh, the moment, you, like as you sign the grant, right? You'll sign the grant on April 1st. The first payment will happen then, and it will be 30% of what you have requested. The second, third, and final payment, they are triggered. So they happen when you submit that technical and financial report. The payment portions are 30% at the beginning, 30% is the second payment, 35 is the third payment, and then we're leaving 5%, which will be paid out as your, your project is finalized. So this 5% is what's kept at the very end. These reports that we're requesting, especially the second and third, is our way to making sure that the, the project is progressing and it's you know, going as expected, right? It's our way to say, yes, this is going really well. These are where the challenges are. How can we help you? What do you need from us? It's our way of ensuring that the project is, is happening in the time frame that is expected and that the actions of the project are in line with what was proposed. And again, I know that this is a lot of information that's very technical, um, but we will have a meeting just to discuss this financial aspect of, of the project. So I wanted to give you an example of these reports because again, they very much depend on how long your, your project uh, is expected to take place. There are projects that will last four months. If your project will last four months, you will be, again, receiving the, the first payment at the beginning. So this gives you a float. So this gives you some of the money to start the project. You will then need to submit an interim report during the second month of your project, right? So you will be telling us what took place during month one. You will then get that payment. There will be an interim report, a second one on month three, which will cover what was done during month two, and then the final report, which will be submitted, you know, 30 days after the project concluded. There are different scenarios, again, based on how long your project takes place. The other example on the other side of the spectrum is if your project is expected to last for 12 months. Your first report, so the first engagement that you'll tell us how your project is unfolding will be during month four. So this report again will cover what has taken place, what happened, what did I do, what events did I hold, what, what uh, costs have I incurred during month one to three. The second one would happen then in month eight and again covering month three to seven and then like always, the last one will always happen 30 days after your final month. Again, a lot of information. You will receive an invite uh, for a meeting just to discuss these financial details in, in, um, in more detail, which will also be outlined in the grant agreement. The grant agreement will then provide you with seven annexes in total. The first annex is where you're going to list all everyone that's on your project team. So if you are doing this by yourself, you'll list your name and, and that information. If this, um, if this project 
happens in a group uh, with all of your colleagues, you have to list all the members of your team in this annex. Annex two, this is the description of the action. What this is, is your application form that you received once you submitted your proposal. All you're going to do is attach that to the grant agreement. Same thing for Annex 3. So this is the budget, that Word document that you completed, that all you got to do is attach uh, that budget. We then have an Annex, and again, this is a bit more detailed, more technical, which is a table that provides you with information about the maximum daily rate, so the maximum daily amount that uh, an individual can receive as part of their work for the project, the personal cost. And this varies by country. So we've listed all the countries, we've listed the amounts, and this is just an information table for you to consider and follow when you're, when you're thinking of the, of the cost for the personnel take, um, helping with the project. We then have templates for those reports that you need to submit. So there's a template for the interim report that you must uh, complete and a template for the final report. The last uh, annex is a form. And you know I'm not really going to talk about this right now because this is another layer to that financial, but it's a form that you'd have to complete and send to us when you would like the consortium to pay um, for a cost of your project on your behalf. So there are some rules to when our team, the U Teams for the Green team, can do this for you when we can pay um, for a cost for your project. There are some rules and we'll go into it uh, in more detail in a later meeting. But if you read this, if you read the rules and you think that you need us to purchase that, there is a form that you have to complete and there is a certain time uh, that you have to do this in. So these are the seven annexes. This is some of the general idea of what this grant agreement is, which is a document that you'll soon um, be receiving. Along with that grant agreement, there will be some forms, some documents that you will need to sign and send to us. So if you are under 18 years old, uh, your legal guardian will have to sign a legal guardian de declaration. And what this is, is that they agree that you will be part of the U Teams for Green project. All project team members who are under 18 years old will need to have their legal guardian complete this form. The second form is a declaration on honor exclusion criteria and selection criteria. And this, all it does is you're declaring as the project representative, as the individual signing the, the agreement, that you comply with the selection criteria and that you are judicially, legally, and financially fit to receive this grant. The third one is a financial identification form. So this form, you would include the bank account details for which we would send um, the, the payments to. The legal entity form, so there are different kinds of forms, whether you're an individual, so whether you're an adult, um, or, or a private entity or a youth association and an NGO. And again, all it does is identifying your personal and legal information, which is a required form uh, to make sure that you can sign uh, the grant agreements. We then ask that you sign the photograph, video, or audio recording consent form. This is because you know, as you as you complete your project, you'll be taking photos, you'll be taking videos, and it's, it'll be a really great opportunity for the U Teams for Green team to receive those and, and share it, whether it's with media, local newspapers, on our websites, or on our social media. So if you are um, willing and would like us to, to share that content, the photos, videos, or audio from your project, you must have this form 
uh, signs. And it's not just the project team leader. It's not just the person that signs the agreement. It's everyone on your team. Every single person must sign a separate form. There is also the representation consent form. So uh, because there will be one name in the grant agreement, one name of the, of the beneficiary, and there are projects which can be done in a group, we need all the team members to say, yes, I agree that so-and-so will be the beneficiary, that the money will be sent to the account that I identified, and that they will represent the, the group uh, throughout our project's time frame. So all it does, it's saying, as an individual, uh, I am part of this team, and I agree that my colleague represents me um, throughout, throughout the project. We will then ask you to fill out a Google form, and all we're asking is for bits of information about your project title, acronym, whether you have any social media or websites already established, a description of it, and where this will, will go is to an information portal. So we are creating a website where all your projects are going to be highlighted and showcased, and this is going to be a website that's going to be shared with the European Commission and, and the public. And so this information that you're providing us through this project overview form will be used to, to share it um, on, on that website. So you have about seven forms uh, to fill out. Uh, we've given you a bit of a summary of what they are. Once you receive them, again, if you have any questions about who needs to sign it, how, um, or you just need an understanding as to what those forms are, just do please uh, let us know because it's it, we understand that it's quite um, a list. So as I've been talking uh, a little bit, I've been saying that we're going to have meetings about the financial aspects of the project and I've been talking about an information portal. And so we will have uh, a number of meetings in the next few weeks to introduce you to all these aspects. So the first uh, meeting that we have prepared uh, is on Monday, so on March 27. And this is a meeting for your parents or your legal guardian. So if they are interested, if they have questions for the U Teams for Green team about what the project is, what your participation may look like, what your responsibilities is, or even what they will be um, doing if you know you are under 18, that we will invite them to this meeting and we will explain the process to them as well. Uh, we will then have a meeting on April 13th, and this is where we're going to introduce you to the information portal, where we're going to introduce you um, to that website that I was talking about, and you will be um, trained to, uh, to, to use it. Um, this will also be the time where you will meet uh, your local facilitator. So as some of you may know, uh, the U Teams for Green project has local facilitators throughout um, the, the EU member states. And these individuals are going to assist you as you develop your project. Some of you have already contacted them for some help in the application. Um, process and they will continue to provide you that support um, as, as, as the project unfolds. We will then have the meeting. So this is the mandatory meeting. It is very, very important that you or a member of your team attends, which is on April 19th. This meeting, we will go over the financial reporting tool in great detail. We will talk about the expenses, we will talk about what's eligible and not. We will talk about what your obligations are uh, when, when reporting the, the cost of your project. And we'll just give you some tips on how to efficiently and, and, and um, adequately manage your, your projects. So you will be receiving an invite. Um, to these meetings, the invite will go to the email address 
that, as, that appears in the application form. So if you are the applicant, please do uh, make sure you share that, that link with your team members. <laughs> The, the other point that we'd like to make is about the uh, contact information um, that you will use when reaching out to us. As of now, you're likely using the hello at euteamsforgreen.org email address. We've created an inbox that is dedicated to the project teams that will be implementing the projects and that is dedicated to answer your questions in a very timely manner. Um, so if you have questions that are specific to your project and you need that assistance, I would like you to use the new email, which is assistance at euteensforgreen.org. In your subject, you need to identify your project by writing down the title first and then, you know, just a general subject. This will allow us to filter and understand um, who is reaching out right away. The other rule is that your project team leader must be the one contacting us. This will just make sure that the communication um, flows correctly and that we are engaging with, with the, the team leader. It will then obviously be the responsibility of that team leader to either CC uh, the team members or share that information uh, externally, but when reaching out to our team, just to ensure consistency and to ensure that um, we're communicating in, in, a, in, a, in the correct flow, the project team leader must always be the individual uh, directing the questions to our inbox. And again, when sending us an email, make sure you first identify your project in the subject line. So this has been a very, very quick overview um, of the grant agreement preparation phase. This is the one of the first meetings uh, in a series of, of a few that you will have. And we wanted to take the time obviously to, to congratulate you for your successful proposal, but to give you a bit of, um, of an overview of what you can expect of the documents that you'll, you can expect to receive um, and, and, and making sure that you also know that we're very much uh, here and, and present to, to assist you throughout the project. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now because I can't see anyone. Um, but I, I do know that we've had, we have some questions in the chat now. Um, and I don't know if any of the other consortium members would like to take some time now to either introduce themselves or, or, or just welcome the, um, the, the project beneficiaries, but I can take a quick look at the chat since we have some time and, and see if there's some repeating questions that we can answer right off the bat. But I'll open the floors a little bit now to the consortium members and or some of the project leaders to, uh, to pose any questions they might have. So maybe I take the, this opportunity just to say hi and welcome you all. Uh, so we are really happy to have you all here to have the opportunity to, on behalf of the Commission, uh, to um, implement this action, which is to, to design this supporting scheme, EU Teens for Green, aim at um, then selecting um, several actions and uh, Patricia started by saying that th this was a very competitive call and it was so we received almost 200 applications and we are supporting um, 73 um, uh, projects which is a lot we would like to do more but this means that all of you are uh, in the top of the, the scores and have really very interesting projects to uh, be considered and they were um, and now we are here to support you during all these steps we know that th this is the first meeting of, of many and uh, you teens for green support scheme is not only um, redistributing the grants and saying now it's your turn and this is to be a youth-led uh, uh, initiative and you will help um, in this um, um, 
green and very uh, just and positive just transition uh, way. But what we expect is that you see that this as a collaborative scheme as well. And this is the reason why we have the local facilitators and we have uh, the assistance email and uh, our team here available to support you along this uh, process. Uh, so uh, we are really happy to do this journey with you and uh, available to uh, address your questions. We tried already to address some of these questions that you uh, put it in the chat about uh, some uh, really key aspects is the, uh, the eligibility period. We said that projects are going to start 1st of April. Uh, this means that uh, from that moment, the eligibility period starts. You can only incur in expenses from that moment uh, um, uh, on, and uh, you should not um, incur in costs before that period. If we inc you start incurring costs even before you receive the first payment, then please collect uh, the, um, the receipts and everything that is evidence uh, that uh, the costs were was incurred and is linked to the to the action. Okay, uh, Patricia, maybe we see many questions here in the chat and what we can say is that we will, um, we have them and we will record them and then later, of course, we will address those that were not, uh, we didn't have time to, uh, or, or opportunity or sufficient information to share with you because some of this requires uh, as well um, legal or financial advice. What we can say is that it's not expected that with this fund you have uh, profit and uh, there was a question on how this will be taxed if I'm a personal, um, if I'm an individual person. And what you're doing, you are receiving the money, the fund, to then implement an action and you then give proofs on how you exp uh, or how you incur with expenses and how the money was uh, allocated to the implementation of the action. Partially, this cost will be for your time, if you are a volunteer, if you are a natural person with a contract or an employee, depending on the cases. And uh, in, in those situations, of course, there, there is money that stays with the beneficiary receiving the the grant, but in principle, what you're doing is using the grant for a major purpose, that is the implementation of your action, and uh, you detail well this in your um, description of action and budget. Like Sada said, um, if you have any questions, please do insert them in the chat. You can, if you're not comfortable writing the question to everyone, there is the option to only send it to um, to myself uh, as the host. So please feel free to, to write those or use our email addresses to, to submit your questions. And we will compile this and create a FAQ document to, to share with you to make sure that we answer them all fully um, and in writing so that we can provide greater, greater information to you. Okay, so there are many, many questions related to financial aspects and just to again say that we will have the chance of discussing all this in a specific meeting for management and financial uh, matters and uh, personal um, costs include different addings from uh, costs uh, with employees to costs with volunteers, uh, they are all there. Uh, but then if you are subcontracting someone or saying, uh, then the, the cost will go to another heading, which will not be personal. But that depends on the type of um, contract you establish with this person, if it's a subcontracting or if it's someone that then is considered a volunteer or a natural person working uh, uh, with a contract uh, or equivalent to perform the action. Could I ask a question? So uh, my name is Achilles. I'm representing a team of three. We're running a project in Syros called Syros Smart Sustainable Island. And I've seen a lot of people um, typing this as well. And it's a question we also had. 
since uh, there has been this rearrangement with uh, time and since budget and activities time-wise was at a preliminary level, of course, transparency given, would it be possible to provide for a little bit more flexible framework or could you clarify the limits to this flexibility? Thank you. Okay, so in uh, we can try to do that, but what we can say at this point is that we have this flexibility considering the, um, the duration of the action. If you already anticipate that you need an extension, this could be considered in the limits of, because your projects are under this main, um, the umbrella um, UTINs for Green project, and we have as well our timeline. So we have limited uh, like capacity to adjust extensions to projects that are already, for instance, projects of, of one year. And uh, so we will do our best to fit the, 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 and the address your needs, but we uh, need to do that uh, considering the framework of the EU team's uh, uh, project. Regarding the budget, if it's something that is adjustment uh, uh, between budget addings, let's say that you you initially plan that you would uh, incur an X cost with personnel, and now you see that you will need more for uh, traveling, for instance. Then you, inside the budget that you already estimated, can adjust between the budget categories. What will not uh, be possible is to increase or decrease uh, uh, the, the amount that was approved. Because if it's to decrease, then is a matter of execution. You will not, you will be under execution at the end. You, but if it's if it is uh, normally we don't we don't reduce grants. But uh, uh, if you want to in increase a bit, that will not be possible. You need to work between addings, and even these adjustments need to be very well justified. But this is done at different moments. The first moment is now because you're signing the contract and the contract um, includes the annexes of the description of the action and budget. And this will be the guiding reference for everything that comes next. And because of that, you can ask now for small uh, adjustments that will be an analyzed and if approved, they will be included in a um, table of changes in, in the contract. So we say, that this is the original application and, and forms, and those are the changes that were approved, and that would be the reference for your the implementation of your action in terms of operational um, terms uh, and in terms of uh, financial aspects as well. Okay, so about the the, the capacity, uh, the way the, um, the financial capacity, uh, we know that um, the, the scheme was designed for uh, youth-led and for teens and youth associations. So when designing payment schemes, the payment, the payment scheme, we try to already um, put 30% uh, up front. So with the signature of the con contract, you will receive 30% of the, the grant. And then as soon as you um, have incurred in all the, the costs to cover that amount, you can request for um, uh, a new payment. And with that, you will receive 30 more. And you can continue with this um, scheme to make sure that you always have money. And we left um, just a small part for the final payment. And this is because besides doing these payments and giving you these advance uh, uh, payments, financial uh, amounts, you have the opportunity to request the co coordinator to um, um, procure on your behalf goods, works, and services. This is a limited, um, of course, has some limit. You need this is described in the contract, and will be later uh, discussed as well. But in this is to help you to reduce a bit effort you have in <clears throat> paying things without having financial capacity to do that, or because you already incur in the cost of the first or second payment. And then you can send the form to the coordinator and ask, please procure these goods, works and services on our behalf. 
and we will do that uh, to the limit of th uh, three suppliers or procurements. In these cases, the amount that we are do uh, paying on your behalf will then be reduced to the um, to the amount of your grant because the cost was not incurred by you, was incur incurred by us as a supporting um, scheme. Hi, good evening. I'm Blanca Travesi from U4 Impact. Uh, we have a local project in, in Asturias, in Oviedo. And I was wondering, I presented the project with an association, with a youth association. So I assume that all the costs that we have will be legally done by that association with the money that you give us. So all the taxes uh, will go with the association and all the contracts with uh, personal and stuff, right? So when... Um... Uh, a, a teen or a group of teens is uh, uh, applying on behalf of an association to simplify the management of the grant, uh, we uh, will establish the contract between the, um, the coordinator and the association. The association will be the one uh, receiving and signing the contract, but we'll need to identify the, the, the team involving the project and the team needs to have a team leader, which needs to be um, a team under the conditions that were established in the call in terms of age range. And uh, this team leader then will be the, the face of the project, let's say, together with the team members. Uh, this to, to say that although the contract is signed by a legal representative of the association, and although the payments are then um, sent to the association, Teens are deeply involved, are expected to be deeply involved in the implementation of the, of the action. And uh, what we believe is good as um, a learning process is, is to really uh, follow up this, uh, this, all this, because it, now it seems um, a lot. And, uh, and for those that are first time uh, involved in managing grants with all this, budget categories, payment schemes and contracts and all these uh, elements seems a lot, but uh, meeting by meeting, you will see that uh, it's, it's not so um, difficult and uh, it, it will help you to um, improve your um, knowledge and skills on, on, at this level. And, and this is a, a winning aspect, I would say, of, uh, of the project. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can I also ask another question? Well, I think that uh, one one minute has uh, their hand raised. So I'll ask later. Okay, thank you. And then maybe if we can go. Um, we were wondering because I think I understood that you said that we can start uh, like spending money for the project on the 1st of April, but we're going to have the meeting about the financial contribution on the 19th of April. So I was wondering if we can get maybe like a PDF on these like eligible costs and specifically to be sure that we're not spending money on something that then after won't be reimbursed. Thank you. Yeah. So before that meeting, you will have access to the contract that already explains what these budget headings are and then the reporting tool, which will be used for the interim reports and final report. And the, this uh, reporting tool is an Excel that is organized by budget category. So it will give you instructions on what the budget category is, for instance, what we mean by um, personal costs, and then give examples on how you can apply this to your project. And more than that, it already lists the number, the supporting documents that you will need to collect and provide at these specific moments of interim report and final report. I, I think I can go next then. Um, first, I would like to say thank you for the informative presentation. Um, my question is whether 
um, there is a specific deadline for amendments, um, such as ch changing of, of budget categories or um, at the change of timeline of the project timeline before we sign that grant agreement, whether there is a cutoff date before we, we need to sign. There is a cutoff date, sorry, okay. um, before we need to hand in those amendments. Um, yeah. So that after we can proceed to signing the agreements. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, you can do this at this stage, but this doesn't mean that you don't, you cannot do later because you can uh, later during, even when the, the action is running, ask for amendment amendment and then uh, you can uh, let's say that at this mo moment everything feels good and in line with what was proposed but later in two or three months you you then find that something uh, due to um, something that wasn't expected you need to adjust then you can ask for this amendment later um, okay. but at this stage what we would like to stress is that the project uh, has a fixed date to start. Uh, the eligibility period starts counting from 1st of April. And then during from this meeting and, and until we hope soon, we will have this um, process of um, uh, back and forth with you to sign several documents and collect uh, all the declarations plus contract. When this is concluded, we will be able to pay you the first uh, advance payment. And so the most urgent with all this is that you want the grant to start doing your action and the grant is pending, receiving this grant will be pending on signing the contract. So there is no, it, we cannot say there is a deadline for when you can ask this, but uh, we can stress that is of your interest and of our interest as well, that we do this as soon as possible so we can focus on the actions and we still leave the door open to the possibility of doing this adjustment later. In any case, if you already know that you need more time or if you need some changes in the budget, if you know all this, then it's just put it in right and ask for these exchanging emails and then uh, this will evolve to the, the table of changes in the contract when approved and then sign. Okay, thank you. And another question. Um, in the case that there will be there will be a change required in the project leader, um, would that be possible due to any unforeseen circumstances, obviously? Because ideally throughout the project you have one person responsible for it. The beneficiary or the team leader? The team asking? leader. The team leader. Because the beneficiary will sign the contract and then the team leader is specially there because when we have youth associations, we want to make sure that the actions are led, youth led, and they are um, being, oh, again, sorry, um, led, <laughs> this is by um, teens with the ages under the, the ranges provided in the call. And this is why we're putting a team leader there to make sure that even as uh, the association is uh, responsible as a beneficiary for signing the contract and supporting the management of the, of the grant, in the end, who is implementing the action are teams. Okay, and can the team leader be changed? In principle, yes. So it's just a matter of, ident you're saying during the project, something. Yes. Yes. Due to any unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. In that case, we will need to uh, to just to to prepare a new declaration with the, the team composition. Okay. Thank you. So um, the meeting was scheduled to to last about an hour, and we know that we're in different time zones, and it might be getting late. So I'll open up the floor again for one or two more questions. Uh, but I would ask you now to take the time to to write down the questions in the chat so that we can save them. And again, we'll be collecting all those questions and 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 putting them uh, together in a document with uh, full answers. But I see that uh, someone's with their hand up, so feel free to um, ask your question now. 
Uh, hi, I will be very quick. So my question is, um, there is a beneficiary and there is a team leader. However, is this the same person or these are two different people? It could be the same person. So if okay. it's uh, the applicant was um, uh, um, a teen representing a, a group of um, colleagues or, or young people, in that case, the team leader will be one of them, the applicant, and then the, the remaining colleagues that will uh, support the implementation of the, the action will be team members. All right. And uh, should those two people be um, at the age 19 to 24? Like the, uh, the person signing the contract and the team leader? There will the, the person in principle signing the contract will be um, the applicant. The only exception is if the person, the applicant was applying on behalf of an association. And then in that case, the association signs the, the contract. Sorry, could you repeat again? Uh, okay, I was asking if the team leader and uh, the beneficiary, the person who is signing the contract, okay. Uh, should be uh, at the age of 19 to 24. The, the range of was the, the one provided in, in the call, and this yeah. is the one to be considered. If we have someone that is team leader but is a minor, we, and in all cases, even if it's a team member, we mm -hmm. will need uh, the declarations uh, from the, the legal guardians um, in, in all cases, if it, it could be a minor. Uh, or if it's not, then it, uh, the person signs the declaration uh, as an adult, let's say, and, um, and then all the other elements of the group will sign a declaration accepting that the grant will be managed by that person. Thank you. We have a last question uh, can i ask a question yeah, for sure. uh, okay so I, i'll be very quick uh, i have a question uh, because you have presented us today these uh, uh, all of the documents that you require from us so will you send us some templates how we uh, how can we make this uh, uh, the main document you presented us and all of the uh, the ingredients of it uh, and so on so the the forms so the list of the forms that you need to complete we will be sending them to you uh for signature and and for completion and then obviously the contract the annexes um the reporting tool they they would all come with templates and examples and how to properly uh fill them out so the documentation that we need from you about your personal information the legal guardian consent and whatnot, those forms that we will submit for completion and signature. And then the documentation that goes along with the grant and the annexes, we will make sure uh, that you also have examples of how to complete certain reporting. Uh, and, and obviously we'll also be open uh, through inbox, through our emails to, to clarify any questions that you may have. But yes, uh, there will be there will be uh, uh, examples. Uh, okay, thank you. Provided. Just uh, supplementing what Patricia is saying, uh, it's not all about documents and saying, this is it, bye now, <laughs> you need to do what we're asking. Uh, please keep in mind that we are here to help. And if you don't know how to complete something or if you don't understand what is there written and you need more examples, you can just send an email and we will return and help uh, in what we can, okay? So it's, it's not only you just need to follow what is in the PowerPoint and in the declarations provided, we are still here and can help. Maybe one last question from one last short question from my end before we close. Um, uh, when does when does the duration of the project start? As soon as we sign the grant agreement? No. So the 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 projects all start 
in the same date, which okay. is 1st of April. This is a fixed date. And from that point, we start counting the eligibility period. If you said that your action was four months, then your action will start from 1st of April, then four months. And if it's six, then you count more six. And so it will be from that point. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you everyone again for, for participating and, and interacting with us, posing your questions. Uh, congratulations once again on having your project selected. Uh, we know the proposal part is already uh, a lot of work and a lot of dedication, so congratulations uh, to you all. Uh, we will keep we will uh, keep that inbox open for any questions that you may have. We will collect the questions from the chat uh, and provide you with those answers in the coming days. We will also be sharing the presentation and the recording of, of this meeting. Um, of course, in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out to, to us through the hello inbox uh, for any additional details that you may have or any other questions that come up um, once, once we leave this meeting. Uh, we will be in touch. We, you will be receiving a number of emails from us. The, the next one that you'll be receiving will be about that information session for parents and legal guardians that would like more information about this project, about the, um, the participation of, of, of you and how they might be involved as well if they eventually are the beneficiaries. Um, so again, thank you all very much and hope you all have a great evening. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, thank have you. a good evening. Great evening. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>